Afternoon everybody, you are coming to you from dash cam, hands free of course, don't want to break any rules, see Jess on my shoulder here, we've been out collecting cameras, it's now uh, the very end of September, I'm starting a little bit early, I wasn't planning on bringing in the cameras till uh, October, but I started bringing them in last weekend, I went down south and grabbed the ones down there. Uh, went for a trip to the snow. We had that big snow belt come through Southern Australia a week ago, which was fantastic. Got some great shots there of the old Subaru banging away through the snow. Um, a bit of an update. So I want to touch base with you. We're going to go back in time a bit to March. Now everybody knows what happened in February, March. I got some photos. Those who uh, knew what they were looking at, sort of, some were a bit disappointed because you know, it wasn't as clear as what they'd hoped. But, you know, even in the news poll, 19% of the people said that that photo of a baby was um, a thylacine. And 60% said it was a cat. Obviously, 60% of the people out there don't know a cat from a marsupial. That includes a few uh, people on the mainland who used to hunt big cats, doesn't it? Anyway, they've all had their field day. They've all had a bit of fun at my expense, and that's fine. I don't care. There was a few few idiots that came out swinging because they know more than everybody else. Um, I've got an interview here for you that I conducted back in early March with a lady by the name of Norma Baker. Norma Baker is an animal carer, a wildlife carer, a rehabilitator. She has hand reared literally thousands and thousands of Tasmanian native animals. Uh, she has well over 60 years experience rearing these animals. So I'm gonna say she's probably the Tasmanian paddy melon expert, actually. She's not formally trained at any university or college, but that doesn't mean she's not an expert. Those animals include wombats, possums, wallabies, and yep, you guessed it, Norma's hand raised hundreds, if not thousands, of Tasmanian paddy melons. Norma knows more about paddy melons than probably everybody at the uh, National Parks and Wildlife Service and T-Mag Museum combined. I would put my faith in Norma before I would put my faith in anybody else when it comes to behaviour, shape, size, dimensions and um, locomotion of paddy melons in Tasmania. So without further ado, here is Norma's interview. Uh, this was, as I said, recorded in March and um, it's very interesting to hear what she's got to say about our little photo of baby home. Nothing's changed since I was last here, except there's no wombats walking around. No, Plus, there's two big the ones asleep in there. They should be waking up soon for a bottle. Oh, that's sweet. How many animals do you reckon you've rehabilitated in your time? I don't know. I lost count about 10 years ago at 180 wombats. Wow. I used to keep records, but after a while... It just became too much. Yeah, just... You spend more time lost writing interest. than caring. Yes, <laughs> lost, lost interest in keeping count. But I have diaries that I've yeah. got them all listed. Now, I see you're not wearing glasses, so I'm going to assume that you've still got pretty good vision. I've only got one good eye. Okay. But that's had a cataract a good removed, eye. so it's not bad these days. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, that's all right. The fact that you have so much hands-on experience caring for these little critters gives you the credibility that I'm looking for. I don't care what anybody for. says. It oh, I don't makes care one what... heck of a lot of difference is yes. the experience. Absolutely. And experience else. is everything yes. in life, without a doubt. There's my uh, screensaver right there. That's right. one of the taxidermies from the South oh, Australian yes, Museum, and yes. I think she looks fantastic. Yes. She's in such the really good taxidermist yes. they had back in the day. My word, that's Did, incredible. It's like she's isn't breathing, it? isn't it? And Absolutely incredible. That one in the background is one of a pair of twins that arrived at the Adelaide Zoo in 1896. Oh. Sadly, they didn't live very long. And yeah. One died on Australia Day, 1896, and the other one died about a week later. So, but they're very good taxidermies, though. They are really, 
And that is Ship really shape. something, that one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful Ooh. animal. So I'm not going to dilly-dally, I'll get straight onto it. Because I know you're a busy lady and I don't want to hold you up too much. But I really appreciate your time today. It's really cool that you're, you're happy to talk to me about this stuff. So that there's over nine, I'll just show you, there's over 900 photos on the card, okay? And sometime in October, the, the camera reset to factory settings and we lost the time signature. So every photo after October the 20th says 1st of the 1st of 2016. Oh, right. Just to make my life more difficult. Yes. But it still managed to capture what I believe, well, what I know, is um, a baby thylacine and it's mum and dad. The, the the interesting part is the mum came through first, then the baby, yeah, and then the dad. The dad following up. So my theory is, or my, my complaint, my, my claim, whatever, my bold statement is, why the hell is a baby thylacine hanging out with two paddy mills? Yes. Makes no sense. No, none at all. It's a totally illogical argument to say that all three are paddy mills. We'll be following through, yes. So the first photo I got, I'm going to blow this up for you. I'll Allow grab me these to. In case I need them. I'll sit around like this next to you. Yeah. And that way, you can see that That's I can right. see at the same time. Put the one back. And we're all good to go. Right. So this is the first photo we got at night. Okay. How's that for sight? Can you see that? Okay. Yes, no problems. The glare's all right. Yes. So this is blurry. There's these two little eyes and these two little ears, okay? This is a tiny animal. This is really small because when you have a look at the spot, we're looking at a little baby animal here, right? Yes. This is the next shot. Comes into focus. Now I've already had my vet and Greg, Greg from Bonnerong tell me that it's not a quoll or a devil. So we've got this face with this muzzle and these little rounded ears, okay? This isn't the best photo, but this is a no, very good no. photo of its face. So there's the rounded the ears. The eye and the head shape could be a paddy, but those ears are wrong. It's very broad head too. Yes. That's but when they're very little, just depending which area you get them from, it's surprising how their shape varies. But You can see that it's got a rather like thick, a paddy. thick neck there, okay? Mm. Oddly enough, Nick didn't report on this photo. Oh. He didn't offer any opinion on this photo, yeah. even though he had it there to report on, which I found to be a bit interesting. And the eye shine back is the wrong shape for a paddy too. Oh, well, that's nice to know. That, that night glow, and I put the outside light on at night, mm -hmm. they are not round. What shape are paddy they? Paddy like that. I'd have to really think about it, More but I know shape? they're not round like that. Okay, well, that's yeah. cool. It's another helpful yeah, bit of information. Yeah, they're much, much deeper at the bottom of the eye than a paddy Ah, is. okay. It's probably a little more elliptical, but... Oh, ah, yeah, I'd yeah, have yeah. to go and have a look at mine at, out at night. So you can see the back <laughs> line there as well, and it seems rather wide. Yes. So the neck is as broad yes. as the head. There's not enough neck for starters, unless they could be the angle. Could be the and angle. And when you first came in, was there something sitting on the side when that first picture you showed me, very tiny? Um, no, that's the first shot there. No, there's only... All there is is debris and branches and stuff. There's no other animals right, yeah. in that photo no, right. that I, I can tell. I was busy looking at that and not over there. That's okay. So this is what I believe is the mother. Now, I believe it's the mother for a couple of reasons. Number one, we've got an ear way out here. This animal's got a rather broad head. And you look at that back and it looks like it's got a long back and it's not hopping, it's running or walking. That's my yes, theory. I'm just trying to find the tail. The tail is pointing <laughs> literally straight at us and that's why it's not offering us any clues. Because the paddy tail always, when they're leaning forward, they have that curve. Scoop because the bottom, last third of the tail is always on the ground. Always. Not in the air. So. Oh. They, their tail doesn't stick out behind them when they when they got their heads down grazing. Oh, that's excellent. Their tail to know. still drops. All yes. the all the um, so-called experts yeah. are going to hate that bit but of information. But I must admit, I can't, I can't see enough of the tail. 
to distinguish. On there to tell. The back legs look rather chunky to me. That's a lot of fur, I reckon, when you look at the outline up there. Yep. That's fur, and if that's the hock... Yes, right then there. Then Katie Mellons don't have pantaloons with a hock... Oh, don't they? ...below it. But this animal has. That doesn't look the right shape for a paddy melon hind leg. Excellent. Well, let's get down to business then, mm, and I'll show you the baby thylacine photo. This is it. Now, this is exactly the same spot, so I'll just flick back so you can see the size difference. There's the mum. There's the joey. Now, the lighting tells us something, that it, these photos aren't very far apart. There is a slight clue. See this here, this dark shape here? Mm. I believe that is the nose of this next animal because you watch what happens to this dark shape here. It's gone. It's back. Mm. So I believe that that dark shape was the nose of the baby closely behind the mother. Now I'll blow up the baby and show you the baby. So its tail's out dead straight while it's leaning forward, and you just told me that Paddy Mellon's tails don't do that. No. Now no, I... they're not they're not set on the body to be able to come straight out. They've always always, always curved got down. that curve. The only time the tail's off the ground is when they're actually hopping. Excellent. On their back legs. Brilliant. Doesn't First look hand. long enough for that angle to be a so what to we... be a marsupial tail. As in uh, two-legged two ones, as in, yes. As in macropod. Yeah, macropods. And there we go. Yeah. So what we have here, firstly, the first thing that stood out to me when I saw this photo was, again, the width of the head in mm -hmm. relationship to the length and the width of the body. Now, that ear is right on the edge of that rib cage, So that's clearly got a broad head. Would you yes. agree with that? Is that what you could tell from that? What, what can you tell me yes. from that photo? The paddy melons, even those who have their ears slightly to the side of their head, um, it does come, the outer edge comes on the skull below the inner edge of the ear, but not that deeply down. You know, there's not that great a distance between the inner length of the ear and the outer length of the ear. Okay, yep. Yeah. So... Tell me about this. I wouldn't pick that as a paddy melon at any stage. At any stage? It just doesn't look... I can't pick a paddy melon shape in it. Well, I won't say it's a thylacine, but I cannot pick a paddy melon shape anywhere in that. Nowhere. I've Nothing got... that I can see. It looks like it's got the leather below the hop there, but in the previous photograph, the fur stopped well above the hock joint. Mm, and but if you this... look at our paddy melons... Yes. Yeah, there's not such a definition a stop between the fur and the hock joint. It goes it's all the way smoother, down. smoother, much smoother. Right. Yeah. Now, we have some really coarse hair mm. here on this animal. Now, my cat lady pointed out four things about this that made it not a cat, and that is the dead straight tail while walking, the broad stockiness, if that's a kitten, it's a very stocky, muscly kitten. Sure is. Um, the coarse hair and the shiny, smooth, leathery yes. hock. Now, the other hock that's tip... That's a marsupial trait, that leather. Yes. Hock. Yes. Yes. Now, are you going to tell me this is a hopping animal or is this an animal that you think would... No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a hopping animal. This is a the tail, head. tail, yeah. Well, the the shape and the way the stance is. It, it, uh, the last thing I would pick is to be a macropod. It, I mean, the tail could be kinked, could be curled at the tip. But at that stage, there's no way I could I could relate that to any hopping animal. And you've got how many years experience was <laughs> it with this? Well, with all their natives, about 60 at least, probably. 60 years you've been doing this job. Been raising mainly the tiddlers yep. till their releasable age. Yep. That, that's intriguing. So That th also looks as if they could be stripes. It could be well, shadow from the 
well, shrubbery as well, but those stripes on this side look very even. They do, don't the they? The space between the dark stripes and sort of doesn't look, when you look at the fronds and everything, the shape isn't the same because the bush is so haphazard, but those stripes look pretty even. They are. The other thing about the stripes too is this, this one here, this large, thick one, at the front of it, more, more forward than the than the back sort of thing. When you have a look at historical photos of thylacines, they have a thick, broad band of, just in front of their back hips. I haven't seen enough to say that. The only one I've seen is the one that 1936, because that's a year before I was born. That one that you've now, seen now, now you're the last me, one in now you're Hobart away Zoo. All your trade secrets. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> no. Age doesn't bother me. That's doesn't a state of bother mind. Me. Absolutely. So you agree? You can see stripes there on the tail. There's another stripe there. Look, I can tell you so much about the site because I've got so many other photos on this card. One thing I establish is that the animal is next to the tree trunk. The other thing I establish is that the sun is over this side. Yes. So why would these things be putting a shadow over yes. here when the sun's pointing from the other direction? Yes, now, and there's nothing over here. It, all this side is fairly upright. Yes. I can't see anything that would cast two shadows like it does yes. on the left side. That's not rocket science. Oh, it's intriguing, isn't it? The thing that sold me was, A, the head is very broad in relationship to the yes. length and the width of the, the ribs. Yes. The head, the, that ear line is almost as wide as the ribs. Yes, it's totally... Paddy melons have a fat bum yes. and a skinny I mean, head. We can have a quick peek at this one, but... but We don't want um, to stress I, that little I call fella Paddy out. Melons, I call adult Paddy melons door stops. Door stops? They start off <laughs> a little on the head and they get wider and wider and they've got this great broad bum when they're sitting. Yes. And they're a real triangular shape. That's but, the, almost the like bum a pyramid. Where the tail is, yes, yep. is, is their widest feature. And if you look at that... It hasn't got any of those features. The front end is as wide as the back end. That's right. And it's moving away from us. So you would call that a, a marsupial because of its foot? Definitely that leather to me that looks like the hot, hot joint where the light shining on it but that's a typical marsupial foot thank you you but would... but the shape is wrong for anything that hops on two legs because they're all triangular shaped but the paddies are they've got the widest bums of everybody <laughs> <laughs> they really do they're the eye of the marsupial yeah, they world are. look I, I just say to people if it looks like a little door stop it's a paddy melon. It's a rufous wallaby, oh, a okay. paddy melon. Yep, yep. Everybody, I don't know why they call them paddy melons. It's but a strange yeah. word, isn't it? Yes. But um, that's, that's totally wrong for any hopping marsupial. That's gone. And I don't think that anything in there detracts from the shape of it. Not a quoll? No, not I've a, raised quolls. Not a bush rat? No, too solid. No, I've raised them. Not a water rat. What are they call swamp rats. Not a thing. water rat. No. Not a bandicoot. Oh no, I raised plenty of those. Definitely not a bet on. For a start, bandicoots are like one bats. If they've got a tail, it's about that big, so that wipes out <laughs> all bandicoots. Definitely not a wombat. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> oh, that is so intriguing. Isn't she beautiful? Oh, I'd like to look at that for hours on end. I'll give you a copy. That's the real deal right there. Yeah. Still the on the original SD wrong. card. The ear is totally wrong. The width of where the neck ought to be through there is totally wrong for any hopping marsupial because that's the thinnest part of them. So with all due respect... And the tail is either not long enough or the angle... Is wrong. Is wrong, but it should have that sweep off the bum. Yes, and it hasn't because the tail's out straight. Yes. Well, it's actually... It's actually higher there. It's slightly it pointing is. up at the end, isn't it? Yes. Typical yeah, thylacine trait. It doesn't trait. taper. I don't know. I can't say oh, that. I can from my but, sightings in But pro. their tail tapers so much. It's very thick at the base with all of our... our um, macropods. Macropods, sorry, yeah. Yes. Uh, getting old, brain oh, slowing down. But the tail is the wrong shape for any macropod because that. it's very thick at the base and tapers away like a whip. But this is more but evenly that's thickness. Very 
it, with all due respect to Nick Mooney, because he is an authority as far as the museum's concerned when it comes to thylacine, in your words, what would you say in regards to his assessment of that photo as being a paddy melon? It can't, in my opinion, it can't possibly be a macropod at all. The only similarity between a macropod and that is the leather from the hop down to the foot. And you can't see how wide the fur is because the fur on the macropods just fairly clings to the thigh. Okay, it doesn't um, sit it, out. It, in that earlier one you showed me, you know, it was the fur was quite wide. Yes. It wasn't sleek. That's the next. But that's that. Say that hock is the only thing that that you could say without seeing anything else could be a macropod. Right. Nothing else. There's there. only one feature there that makes it a macropod. To me, makes a and macropod. That's the hock. Now yeah. I'm going to show you the dad. Now I might be wrong. This might be yeah. a paddy melon, but have a good look and tell me what you think. See the tail's longer, but it's not tapering near enough. Sometimes you'll get a bennet that has a little tuft of fur there, but to me the tail is not long enough where it comes off the bum to and, there. And it's down. not nearly long enough. It's not tapered enough. That that honestly could be a macropod. What I can see there. Yes. But of course, it's it's not particularly clear. It's not giving away that, too many secrets. If, if you ask me if that tail was a macropod, my immediate answer is no. Right. My my it's thing that I picked stripes up. Stripes too, isn't it? Yeah, it does have stripes. They look. They all look like stripes down the tail. Whether thylacines the other have thing stripes, too. I don't know. There's that ear again, sticking mm. out rather wide. Again, to me. Yes wrong position for a paddy melon's ear to be in relation to the width of its bottom. No, I couldn't make that assessment from me. That's fine. The shape, to me the shape over the bum is more marsupial, that sloping, yes. sloping hind quarters. But that, that could be a macropod, but the tail isn't long enough and it's not the right shape for a macropod that's leaning forward. Right, so where should that tail be if it's leaning forward? Pointing down? It, it should come more this way and the bottom part would be down here somewhere. Touching the ground practically, almost. Practically touching the ground. And that's because that, of that. That's not a baby, that's more, that's yeah, an yeah. adult, whatever it is. That's more of a counterbalance thing for their locomotion when it they hop? It is definitely a counterbalance. So the only time you see it really off the ground for any length of time is when they're really bounding along. In full speed. Yeah. Yes, um, like on the... And if they're leaning forward, then they're not putting any weight on it. The tail but comes it, down. It comes, comes off the bum more this way. Yes. Because the bottom part is the part that's always on the ground. Yes. When they're standing, you know, that's their third leg. And yes. that's not a leg, because that's well and truly up in the air. So it's not working the same as a no, macropod's tail would work. I can't see that propping a macropod up. I mean, that could, that last one, it could be a macropod hopping away mm -hmm. because the tail, it has that upward curve because that's the counterbalance when it's hopping okay. and that nice round rump. Yes. But without seeing more of the body. It's a bit and hard. And the, the length of the leg. Yes. The length of the leg. Yeah, without seeing more of it, that that could go either way for a macropod. But the but the length of the thickness of the tail compared to the upper part of the leg, to me, is not a macropod leg again. It's that tail again. See, only the tip of that tail has a little curve in it. Turns up where where with a paddy melon, it starts up about here and flattens out. So about so a third it, it of the way It would be round down. about here. Yes. But the size of that rump, the tail should be round about here. If it was a macropod. If it's a macropod. Okay, so... I said, but the only thing I'd comment on that one is it's definitely not a macropod tail. Okay, and it clearly is a marsupial? Definitely a marsupial. That's excellent. Because you can see the hock and the... Again, I th the leather on the hop, but as I said, I th that's just that tail that I'd like to comment on this. No, that, that's absolutely fine. I thought both of the legs looked a little bit like turkey drumsticks, personally. Yes. Rather muscly and round. Yeah, well... Rather than flat and muscly. Well, yeah, so do our macropods too, because that's all the bounce 
you know, they're they're pretty solid. Yes. The upper the the hip part and the upper legs pretty solid. It's got to take a lot of weight when they're bouncing along. Yeah. So you can see the size mm. difference. Female, baby, yeah, dad. Yeah, I said with that one, other than the tail, I could not say that you wouldn't mistake that for a macropod. Yeah, no, that's but fine, but the tail doesn't the fit the mould. tail set doesn't look right to me. It is dropping better, uh, better than the other one, yep. coming off the body in a better shape. Yep. But there's just not enough length in it and not enough taper. Even when they're little like this, yep. you know, they have that taper from the bum to the tip yes. of the tail, and it's very pronounced. But that's pretty much a really there's even not thickness. A, not a, but when you look at the tip of the tail compared to coming off the body... There's not a huge no, difference between said, the width. And, and where I'd expect to see the macropod, the flat part of the tail just isn't there. <laughs> it should be way out here <laughs> where somewhere. Where is it? Yeah, where's the rest of it? It's missing. It's just too short. I'd say that's... Only a little bit over half the length of an adult macropod, that tail, from where it comes off the body. It's just so in your view, just to reiterate, that is absolutely not a macropod. Can't possibly be a macropod. The only thing at all like a macropod is the leather from the hock down. And you can't tell the length of the upper leg to the lower leg. The tail, at what I can see there, is about... A quarter of the length of a macropod tail. It might have a big curl in the middle, but I can't see it. Well, it's out straight, but it's almost straight at the yeah, camera. It's only it's, on a slight angle. Unless it's sort of wagging and, you know, the camera angle sort of, you know, round about there. Yeah, yeah. Is wrong. But the only macropod I can see in that picture is that the bit foot. of hock that you can see. Yep. Because the hock on the lower foot. That's an absolute marsupial yes. trait. Especially yeah, macropods. But it's too, the fur is too shaggy up here. North East area, yeah. I've never had, never got a macropod in with a coat. Like that. Like that. That's gold, normal. That's, that's, yeah. So. Again, that tail is the first thing that strikes me as wrong. The second thing that strikes me is that outside length of the ear is it's too almost... long. And the third thing is the shagginess of the coat overall particularly that that long hair that around the long back foot hair the the there. the juvenile taxidermies in the adelaide museum have basically an identical coat of shaggy hair do they yes the two joeys that are in the adelaide museum their hair is almost identical to that right it's shaggy and it's yeah. coarse i mean you can't mistake that for being no shrubbery no. or light and shade that's the most intriguing one you've got, I reckon. Well, but clearly not a hopper. Definitely. Not, and, a, not a two-legged hopper, no and way. And definitely a marsupial. Definitely a marsupial. That tells you it's a marsupial if nothing else does. But I'm really, really grateful for your mm. expertise. Well, I don't know whether it helps. I can only comment on what I know oh, it, from, it helps. from years of experience. Your 60 plus years experience caring for native wildlife is an immense tool. And I'm still as enraptured with them in this day expertise. as I was 60 years ago. That's fantastic. <laughs> that is absolutely I said fantastic. the first day I don't care is the day I give it up. Well, there's hope, so don't give up yet. All right. That shape, that tail, and that width of body right up to the head could possibly be a macropod. No way. There's just there's just not enough shape in it. Or a cat, because mm. when when you have a cat, that cats have a hock, but all they have is a little pad on the on the yeah, so point of contact. They never have a bald foot. My mum always had foot. a cat when I was a kid, so I, yeah. Their feet are furry underneath. Yes. So it's yeah. absolutely not a cat. It's absolutely it's not. It's definitely a marsupial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, oh, Neil, that is. I'll be dreaming about that tonight, honestly. Well, that's all right. When you see a photo of a good taxidermied thylacine's feet, you can't even see its toes. The hair's that shaggy and Really? Long. Yeah. So for Nick to even mention that, you know, this is a paddy melon feature to have this shaggy hair. He didn't hair. identify that as a paddy melon. He identified that animal right there as a paddy melon. He identified that. Well, that particular picture 
There are similarities, a couple of the other, no way you could, he's only identifying it because of the of yeah, the foot, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. that's because, his only only that, bit of paddy yeah, melon he could that's find there. That's a marsupial feature anyway. Yeah. I'm so glad I've come to see you today. And Nick picked oh, up the phone. Oh, I tell you, I'm very, bet you I'm more glad than you are. No, no, trust me. That, that one. The newspapers have been having a field day at my expense the last few days, but yeah, that's okay. Yeah, well, don't they all? I'm not worried about those turkeys. Yeah, I can't see a macropod feature he, other than that hop. Yep. If it's hopping that branch there. Mm-hmm. It's not the way a macropod would a do it. A macropod would hop because its tail would be a down. A macropod goes Over. that way. The not body way. goes higher. Yeah, driven no. that way, not across. That's right. That looks more like a step across. Yes. Than a than hop, a hop across. across. Its just, head should be up ang- here. Yeah, just if the it's angle hopping. of the hop compared to the angle of the body. Yes. A macropod body when it's hopping like that. The balance, the, the top the of the posture. body would be a lot higher yes. to balance the big bum that's and right. the tail. Because they're going like yes. this. I mean, that that's more more like a four-legged stance Yes. to me, that one. Norma, uh-huh. I can't thank you enough for telling me what that animal isn't. Because it's people like you that do mm-hmm. the hands-on ground, front-line yeah. work for as many yeah, years I mean, as you have. Even there. You can see you how can narrow see his how, face is. How small the head is. Yeah. And it can't have a huge neck on With a, a big... head like that. No. You know. It'd I look mean, like a lollipop. How could it turn its head to that degree? It'd be a hopping if lollipop, it's got a wouldn't it? Huge head. As I said, if they're going to hop, they've got to have a light upper body. Yep. And a heavier bum. Yeah, because too heavy an upper body then throws their locomotion out, and there's that long sweep of tail again. They said even when they're sitting still, they've got at least that much of their tail. On the ground. On the ground. Yep. I'm going to mm. print that photo for you. You're Thank going to have you. the very first copy I ever print, I'll I promise you. that one. All right, and it will be mm. framed for you. And you put it wherever you want. I'll fit it in. In this gallery of <laughs> gallery of awards and you'll rehabilitated the, you'll animals. My fam- I've only got a couple of my family up there. On the bookshelf <laughs> there, yeah. Yeah, no, that's me up there. Ah, oh, yeah, getting awards. Yeah. Doing your they thing. They me into going to Hogarth. No. Oh, well. It's nice to be recognised for your efforts. No, I'd rather be at home. Yeah, and I, I understand. Took, took a wombat with me in a pouch. Yeah. The governor general, she's beautiful. She said to me, "It's not going to wear you down, you." I said, "Have you got it in a nappy?" And I said, "No, it doesn't need one." I said, "I've only not only got one at government house. It had to have its own permission. My little tiny wombat to enter government house." Norma Baker plus Wombat, it said. Well, at least and the I said, Wombat was acknowledged. And I another one in your can't see, and I had one about that big down the front. In your pocket. I was walking out the door at 7 o'clock, and somebody turned up with this tiny little pink Pinky. Wombat. Oh, how gorgeous. And I'm about the only one out this way that... We'll deal with does, the pinkies. No, that does marsupials anyway. Oh, okay. And yep. I love the pinkies. It's two hourly feeding round the clock, and I don't care. You're a legend. I can nap during the day. I'm on my own. I can eat when I like, sleep when I like. You run by your own rules. So I have a bit my like own, me. I have my own rules I'm on my now. own with my dog, and me yeah. and my dog just fly the way we oh, see I fit. I lost my darling old dog a few years ago. She was a bird killer and a cat killer. Uh-huh. And I took her out of a shelter, and There's she that. never touched any of my natives. What There's I that. respected, she respected. That's a smart dog. There's that lizard yes. I was telling you about. Yeah. Blue tongue. Or a goanna, as some locals call them. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I don't deal with is snow. I mean, just the way that hop stands up, it's a typical four-legged creature lifting its hind leg over yes. something. not hopping. Not hopping. No way that's hopping. That is actually stepping over. Well, you know what? It? I mean, that is practically straight down. Yes, it's almost vertical, there. isn't it? Yes, the foot. where if it's a macropod hopping, mm-hmm. the feet are flat. The whole, yeah, and the whole thing comes up to clear because yeah. they've got these long legs. That's right. But they don't lift them like that. I know. They come up this way. Uh-huh. Yeah. I worked that it's out a typical as well. Hopping, typical hopping ocean, not stepping. That's right. Action. We've got a four-legged 
definitely marsupial four-legged. that's not a quoll or just a devil. on that alone i'd say that's got to be a four-legged and it's a marsupial and it's got to be a marsupial because of the leather there yeah. gets more intriguing the more i look at it honestly well, I'm going to give you a copy you see, so that you one's can. Got a long tail, isn't it? Yeah, but that's an adult. Yeah, that's quite a long. We're tail. talking about a baby, yes. and we never really studied these things enough to work out how long it takes them to do X, Y, or Z. Well, they were interested people was killing them and getting the bounty for them. That's it. That's yeah. it. You can see that baby that's there's got shape. his hocks up. Yes. See his hocks that's up there. Shapes his mm -hmm. Walking action. That that. It doesn't have that huge curve of side that the macropods have. Macropods have a very distinct curve back into the hock joint. Yeah, on their hind quarters. It's simply because of the way they have to throw themselves upwards. These guys can hop yeah. like a macropod. I bet they but could they too don't, when you they don't do that. it very often. Mm. They do it when they're startled. Um, from, from sightings reports this is. This right. is what I know from yeah. people telling me their stories. They often see the big males standing on their back feet with their nose in the air sniffing around they've been sighted yeah, doing I mean, that a few the times of the rubber on that nose <clears throat> that yeah like most of our marsupials they use their nose probably more than their eyes to start yeah with. they rely on their They've sense of smell rubber haven't they yep what i call the rubber on the nose yeah which is that yeah. gristle i suppose isn't it well there you go we've been talking for nearly an hour about that photo yeah and my two one best letters they haven't come out yet Oh, that's all right. I've got a, one gorgeous little girl in there called the Minx because she's a right little bugger. <laughs> Norma. But her fur's nearly silver. I want to thank you so much for your for your help here that's because all right. your I, information is gold. I hope I've ruled out some things. You've ruled out <laughs> the one thing. I can't rule in the one thing you want. But no, I that's fine. It's things. about a process of elimination <laughs> yeah, and then you're left with what be. you've got. Yes. It has to be. Grief. Yes. We've either got an unknown... Yeah four-legged <coughs> marsupial Definitely and I've marsupial. made the discovery of the century yes. or we've got a baby thylacine yes. and I've got the discovery of the century and either we, way we, and we're not looking got their head at a, in the sand because they don't want yeah. to deal with it either yeah. way though I think it's yeah. fair to say we're not looking at a patty melon we're not looking at a patty melon no. and I haven't even photographed your baby no for a few weeks yet well thank you very much mm -hmm.